The cry for gold rang out across the Rocky Mountains in the mid-19th century. Those who dreamed of riches looked west of the Mississippi, hearing whispers of fortunes pulled straight from the earth. The small town of Leadville, Colorado, originally called Oro City, would soon leave its mark on history. Once gold was discovered in California Gulch, just south of town in 1859, prospectors flocked out west to stake their claim. There were three different parties, and uh, one went to Iowa Gulch, one went to California Gulch, and one went to Colorado Gulch. It was while mining for gold that a businessman named Horace Tabor realized that silver was even more abundant in the soil than gold. The miners began to trace the silver-rich soil to its source, and a new city was established. Mining was the start of Leadville. These miners knew what they were looking for. Um, I think often you hear the story of just dumb luck, of uh, miners not really know what they're doing. Um, but these people knew what they were looking for, and sure enough, they discovered really rich silver deposits on, on Friar Hill, and that's how Leadville really got its start. The city of Leadville, founded in 1877 at 10,152 feet above sea level, is North America's highest incorporated city. It grew so big that it became one of the world's largest silver camps. Sure, miners came and prospectors, um, but then there was a whole economy surrounding the mining in Leadville. Um, you needed shopkeepers, you needed saloons, um, all sorts of industrial people flocked to this area. In 1877, there were like maybe 200 and 50 to 300 people here. Three years later, there were between 30 and 40,000. In 1888, when, when all these mines were going, uh, uh, they said that they were getting more mail here than there was in San Francisco, and said so all roads led to Leadville. Many people made their fortune during the Colorado silver boom. However, the miners themselves experienced hazardous working conditions with extensive hours and little pay. The miners' work was much more dangerous back during the silver boom today. Today mining is one of the safest occupations in the U.S. Uh, but fatalities were not uncommon. Injuries certainly happened. Uh, there weren't programs like MSHA to strictly regulate mining back in the day, so um, accidents happened. As more and more people came, the need for entertainment grew as well. In 1879, Tabor built the largest and best theater of the West called the Tabor Opera House, which is still standing today. Tabor himself was responsible for many of the city's buildings and growth, but he was not the only wealthy patron in town. The beautiful backdrop attracted an adventurous cast of characters, such as Molly Brown, Doc Holliday, and Oscar Wilde. Doc Holliday actually shot and killed an ex-Leadville policeman, but was never convicted. Leadville's radical growth was slowed when the Sherman Silver Purchase Act of 1893 was repealed. When it was enacted, the government was required to purchase 4.5 million ounces, or over 280,000 pounds of silver each month. While the act initially made the miners quite a lot of money, it ultimately drove down the value of the silver. When it was repealed, the government no longer purchased the silver, and the miners' steady income dried up. This loss was felt throughout Leadville. Horace Tabor lost his entire fortune in his old age, and he died a poor man, while his second wife, Elizabeth Baby Doe Tabor, lived another 36 years in a small cabin at the Matchless Mine, where she died at the age of 81. The silver crash in 1893, he started to lose everything, so by uh, the last year, uh, he even came back to Leadville, and anyway, he died in, in 1899 from appendicitis, and then after that, the two daughters were left, and. Uh, Baby Doe at that time was, uh, uh, there was a kind of an old saying, the prettiest widow in Colorado. She was always very attractive to men, very beautiful lady, and she had a lot of offers to get remarried. She chose not to. Uh, she proved all the people wrong, and she was a gold digger. Leadville now provides adventure and education with eight museums and tons of outdoor recreational activities, including hiking, mountain biking, skiing, and camping. Even though the echoes of the cry for gold have long since faded, its challenging mountain trails, breathtaking scenery, and rich historical sites have transformed the old silver camp into a hidden gem of the towering Rocky Mountains.